The conclusion! We're finally here as we reach the end of this strange film. So, what do you say we finish this up? And so they use the bat boat again, this time for their final showdown against the criminal underworld of Gotham City. Fortunately, the dynamic duo have set up a jamming signal which shakes things up on the Penguin sub. But they believe that the dynamic duo are finally dead. So they dance around like idiots. Yo ho ho! I'm dancing around too because we finally destroyed the dynamic duo! <laughs> I got a little carried away there. I apologize. So the task is now designated that there is no need to sink the sub, merely to drive it to the surface. Torpedoes have been fired from the Penguin sub, so apparently a jamming signal shows up. Yes, so now the Penguin sub is going for a silent running, running silent, running deep. And whatever redundancies I can think of to say here. So now it's Batman's turn to fight back with that pulsar ray. And as they keep blasting the sub, well... Everything shakes around, including those vials which contain the nine world leaders dehydrated. And Commodore Schmidlap? He's still pretty oblivious. And more shooting ensues, and be careful! If those vials break... The consequences could be disastrous. But one last blast convinces the bad guys that it's probably a good idea at this point to surface. So the Joker commands, surface! before we blow up. And so now with all the criminals forced to the surface, it's time for the choppy fist fights that we so know Batman for. And this time we finally get the words showing up on screen. From Thwack to... I said from Thwack to... Biff. And also Bap. Double bap, in fact. So Batman proceeds to knock the Riddler's block off. Until Splash. That might be the dirtiest thing ever said to a woman. So now it's time for a good old-fashioned sword fight between Batman and the Penguin. But when Robin's not looking, well, he goes plop into the water because Catwoman kicks him. Yes, the Penguin figures there's only one way out of this to jump in. Kerplop. As Catwoman tries to make her escape back into the submarine, and honestly, where else could she go, Batman flips her over and, well, that's when he realizes that there never was a Miss Kitka. So that's when Batman hears the opera music playing in his head. Ah, terrific. There had to, I knew there was something about this film that was, well, worthy of my rather upper crusty beliefs. It doesn't mean anything, I'm sure. So snap on the bat cuffs. We've had this romantic moment. 
Batman does manage to find the dehydrated sand, the dehydrated dust, and the dehydrated dust of the nine world leaders. They seem to be intact and, well, unshattered, so time to take it back to, back to the Batcave and, well, what's the worst that can happen? Oh, dear. So now it's time to take them all back to the Batcave. They've scooped up all the dust that they could, and, well, it's time to see if they can do this separation properly before they can rehydrate the nine world leaders. But, of course, in all modesty, if Batman cannot do this, well, heaven only knows who can. Oh, will you stop kissing up, Commissioner? So, Commissioner Gordon receives a call from President Johnson, at least I assume that's Johnson. And I believe this was before Forrest Gump showed him his rear. So, time to feed in the various ethnic and nationality links to everyone's personality. Robin seems to think it might be a good idea to mix around some of those ideas, given the way things are. But no, that wouldn't be ethical or prudent. For in this very Batcave, they saw what happened when one tries to do that. And I suppose Robin's just jealous because his surgical mask doesn't have a nice little bow in the back. So, the separation's been accomplished, and they are ready to rehydrate. Commissioner Gordon passes that on to the President, and, well, he passes it on to other world leaders. And we get basically the same translation over and over again. It becomes intentionally funny, of course. That's what it's meant to do. So now, with everything set up, they are ready to rehydrate. The translation should have made that abundantly clear. So let's see if it works. Well, far be it for me to make a crude joke here, but, well, it sounds like some people are going to the bathroom here in this scene. But it does manage to work, uh, well, to some degree. All the languages are pretty much screwed up, but nevertheless, success, success, they've done it, they've done it, and the translations go on with the same message. He's not, he's not Japanese. Yes, it turns out they're a little jumbled anyway, because everyone's speaking the different, different languages than they should be speaking. Yes, even the Russian is speaking German. Yes, the Egyptian is speaking French. Hmm, given how incredibly screwed up politicians are already, maybe they did succeed. And I thought they'd be totally guilt-ridden over screwing up everything. So, they climb out the window rather discreetly, not to be noticed by the public, and climb down the building on their bat ropes, and, well, that's the end of the picture. The living end? 
Well, one can certainly hope so. Well, there it was, my friends. The 1966 Batman movie. How does it hold up? Well, surprisingly, it's actually quite good. Oh, yes, it's campy and silly. So, while it's completely silly, absolutely goofy, and, well, unbelievably absurd, it's hopelessly endearing. I, for one, have had to have had a lot of pleasure from reviewing this movie. For Masterpiece of Crap Theater, this has been Les Thespian, your host, saying, Will there ever be any more movies kind of like this? Find out. Eventually. Same thespian time, same thespian channel.